It was my best day ever for big fish on the Shenandoah, okay? Especially the North Fork, okay? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fish in the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have the winner of the NKV, N, NVKBA. That is a shit ton of letters all together. NVKBA, trail stop number three, Mr. Lee Wells with 86 inches. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It so, was quite a day. I, dude, it, it's, and you were just saying that there, like, congratulations, it's freaking awesome. And I just, I just want to hear the story. And, and, and honestly, this is something I like to do with all of our winners, whether it's from a boat or kayak. To me, it's always the mental side of things. And, and, and this evening, we kind of went through my mental idea of why I fish where I fish, my thought going into it. What was yours? Were you just set on, hey, I'm just going to fish this area and roll the dice? Did you have a game plan going into it? Like, what weighed on your mind going into this competition? There was a game plan. There was, there was a game plan from it. Uh, there's a couple people I'm going to shout out to, if you don't mind, here as, as we go through. But let me set the stage for it. This is my second year for NVKBA. Uh, I live in Woodstock, so the North Fork is five minutes from the house. Uh, pretty much my home territory, home field advantage, you could call it. And last year, I fished a section of the North Fork from the upper section of the North Fork down. and I won and lost it in the first hour. Mm. Now I was fishing with my fly rod and spinning rods. And I mean, I lost them right at my feet, Ooh. right next to the kayak, you know, the kayak strap next to me, right at the kayak. I lost them putting in the net. I did. I had the old, where you put it on the board and they do the fish flop. Oh my God. Yeah. That I was have the net. Oh, I learned after that. I asked the guys <laughs> and they're all telling me, you know, Hey, put your net underneath your board, you know? Rookie mistake, you know, that's, mm. that's, Preach that's it. what it was. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I went and lost it in the first hour. And I think all the people that I know over the last year or so that here have heard me tell that part of the story because it was. And then after that, after I left that one section for the next six, seven hours, it was just dink fest for me. Mm -hmm. And I was using the wrong stuff, come to find out and just, it was there. So this year, I said, I got to find the big ones. I got to find some big ones. So I talked to a few friends, and we talked about different sections of the North Fork and said, hey, let's start looking. And we started looking, and some of them went fishing for me. Others I fished myself. And anybody who's my friend on Facebook probably seen my posts where I was, quote, practicing. Well, I wasn't practicing on my stretch. I was practicing other stretches so I could get a feel for what they were doing, what was going on, and watching the water flow. Uh, river app. Uh, I'm sure everybody used a river app. Uh, watching that, watching the flows to see what's going on because those fish are going to move. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was good. So my shout out is going to be to A, Randall Grove for helping me out. Randall's a big fan of Jake's Bait and Tackle. Good friend of mine. He helped me out with the planning and the talk and, you know, just kind of getting me in the mental state of it. Uh, and a big shout out to Michelle Franklin, who was my person who shuttled me. She dropped me off at the start of it and she picked me up at the end of it. So, so to set that up, we studied the river a little bit. Uh, trying to figure out where they were uh, and went on, kind of went on from there, you know? So it was a couple weeks of planning, of looking and figuring out what's what's going on with the bite and what's going on with the water. Uh, that was the big thing. The water turned out clear, the water turned out low. I was hoping for that dose of water on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday night that they were calling for, but we never got it. So it got low. Uh, I scraped a little bit, <laughs> mm. but I didn't use my big kayak. I didn't use my old town top order 120. I used my old town Durango, little sit-in, you know, 12, 10, 12 foot sit-in, you know, 45 pound, whatever, you know, I could lift and carry it around. I stripped down to minimum gear. I, I brought 
three rods, okay, and uh, two tap, two you know, thirty seven hundred tackle boxes, my net, my board, my life jacket, and an anchor. And for anybody who does that, I recommend that you use a window weight when you're fishing these rivers because it'll catch for you. It'll also drag for you, but it's not going to get stuck like a claw will mm -hmm. uh, or like uh, a, one of the uh, mushroom anchors. Those yeah. things will catch an edge and you catch an edge and you get that anchor. It's going to pull you. You get into a current, it's going to pull you right under. Yeah. And then I'd also suggest guys, something I learned from saltwater is use zip ties to your anchor. That way, if you do get stuck, I, th I think there was some kid who's, who's boat flipped, but that way it will break free from it. So you can at least salvage something. Yeah. So that was there. So that's kind of the setup for it, for it all. Uh, you know, understanding what, what it was. I, uh, say, I what were you looking for though? Like when you said you were, were you just searching for bigger bites? ledges ledges i was looking for ledges see the ledges look for the dot the the deeper sections of the ledges mm -hmm. uh, that's really what i was looking for uh especially with the lower water you're going to have those ledges those bigger fish are going to be into those ledges they're going to be looking uh looking for uh on the leaves of the boulders where you know you see all the bubbles rolling down through okay and you'll see where the, the bubbles kind of don't move. And there's usually a little lighter shade, especially if you have good glasses, a little lighter shade cast to those areas. That's where they're hot. That's, you know, those fish are, are going to be hanging out in those areas. Now, don't get me wrong. I caught my share of small ones. Mm -hmm. I caught a number of dinks, you know, uh, 10 inches, 12 inches. I was doing the same thing you did, you know, put it on the board. Nope. <laughs> put it on the board. Nope. You know, so that's, and that's the hardest thing. I think when you fish for small, any small mouth tournament, I don't care if it's here or Lake Champlain or St. Lawrence, you're going to go through a lot of them. And and the mind game is, do you go that route of, do you, are you going to fish baits in areas where you're going to have to weed through them? Or do you switch to the idea of, I might not get as many bites, but if I get the bites are right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I focused on throwing three things. I threw three things and those three things all day. And luckily one of them worked out the best. I threw top water. I threw jerk bait and a wacky rig. Soft or hard jerk bait? Uh, hard jerk bait. Hard jerk bait. This little baby right here. Oh, wow. Is that is that your tackle? What is that? Yeah, that's your my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my pattern. I painted it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's my rainbow trout. That's my little, it's a little, you know, two and a half inch jerk bait. I love that color. Yeah, I, I paint this myself. A few of my friends have gotten it. And uh, we'll get you one there, Thomas. Dude, that is a sick color. Like that is a really nice color pattern. The other bait, and I didn't use this bait that day but the other bait that i highly recommend whopper plopper by oh, the way there you go perfect right there perfect there we go oh, that's now that's nice. a 75 i like the 75s okay a little bit better okay a little bigger profile a little bigger profile over here nice. you know than the 90s or the 110s and it's a cadence thing okay you know, a lot of people throw these things out and just buzz them right back. You know, the fish cadence. If you ever used a walk the dog method, try it. Hmm. I never would have thought of doing that on a well, whopper plopper. That's really neat. On smallmouth, try the walk the dog method. You know, plop, 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 stop, pause, plop, 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 pause. It's just like a pause with a jerk bait. You know, you got to find a pattern that they're going to eat. Sometimes they'll eat it slow with a longer pause, sometimes they'll eat it faster with a longer pause. And how I learned that was through my fly fishing. Okay, if those people that don't know me, I'm a big fly guy, okay? And I didn't fly fish this one. I fly fished last year. Hmm. What did I say? I lost a lot of fish, okay? This year I didn't fly fish with it. 
I wanted to win this year. That was, mm. or at least put five on the board because I've never gotten five fish in any tournament since I've been here. Okay? Well, this is a good one to do it for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never got five fish. You know, I'm scared from you that. now. Every time you put five on the board, man, you're going to be cashing a check. I hope so. I hope so. But yeah, that was, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I know it pattern. Oh, sexy. Okay. And monkey butt were the tickets. I how long? Water bite. How long do you stick with top water before you like in general? How long do you like to stick with it on the rivers before you bail? Well, when the fish quit biting. No. So, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. I'll do is I'll you know I'll I'll throw it a couple things if if I don't if I don't get a response maybe I'll throw something else I'll get tired you okay. know but I'll throw it for a while. Uh, what I did and three of my fish came on the whopper plopper, two of them came on a whopper plopper mix mm. and i threw the wacky rig right behind it smart okay just okay. like you do with a a betty a, you know one in the in the in the lily pads you know you're working a frog you see him smash it he misses followed up with a, a wacky rig or a jig you know same thing you miss it toss it right out there Usually they'll go after it because they're they're in the feeding mode, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, small mouths I've found are much more aggressive than large mouths, and that's the fun part about. It. That's why taking them on a fly rod is so much fun, so much fun. Uh, what do you use for your fly rod setup? Because now I'm curious. Okay, well I I use a seven weight Scott. Seven weight. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, it's almost thirty years old. Uh, it was it was it was a present to me uh many years ago and uh it's from murray's fly shop down there you know in edinburgh uh it's murray's bass rod it's a small mouth rod he, you know he designed it with scott in mind and that's what i use uh i use an orvis uh seven weight reel you know madison fly reel uh now i also have an eight weight that i built myself uh, it's an XI2 and, uh, that I use for larger stuff. Sometimes I'll use it when I'm looking for big, large mouths or, uh, I go, you know, have the opportunity to go to the outer banks and fish. Oh, cool. Out there. Yeah. Um, I fish for Albies on fly fish for sharks on fly. We are usually, usually using 10 weights there, but the eight weight I like to throw for Spanish and blues. That's that's a lot of fun, and uh, especially standing there in the surf, you know, you're just and and the blues are coming in, crashing in, and they're just so cool. Eating on those clousers, and I mean, it's it's action all day long to your thing, but you got to you know you got to look for them. And then there's times that you're sitting there and you're getting smacked by waves, but yeah, that that's a lot of fun. And you know, the eight weight I also use when I go down there and fish the sounds for for drum, you know, for red drum. Okay, so we'll get back to the tournament. But the yeah, great yeah, thing about sorry, this sorry. No, 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 no. You no, get me off on a tangent in a heartbeat. I'm dude, sorry. I, th this show's all about tangents, and you got me on one. What is the coolest thing you've caught on a fly? What what, what sticks out in your mind? Uh, it's you gotta have a good story. Oh the, well, I mean, there's lots of them. Uh, the the cool the coolest thing on a fly is shark. Black tip you caught a shark on a fly. Black tip shark. <laughs> yep. Went out. Uh, we go. To, we had. We used to go down to the Outer Banks and fly fish down there. We go out with uh, Outer Banks fly fishing. Uh, Brian Horsley and Sarah Gardner. Uh, great, great folks. Uh, went up with with, the, with Sarah for years. Sarah was a great guide. She's probably one of the top women guides on the East Coast. And uh, go out with them, and they'll you know we'll. We'll chum looking for cobia. We're actually out there trying to catch some cobia. And, you know, they'll, the sharks will come in because you're chumming and we'll tease them with a, with a, uh, we call it a squid, you know, on a, on a piece of monofilm and on a spinning rod, just tease them till they come close enough and then toss, toss a big fly, 
red and orange or orange and yellow fly out there to them and catch them. That's pretty cool. But I'll tell you what, nothing beats an albie bite hmm. or false albacore. I mean, it runs you into your backing like you wouldn't believe. It's, wow. I mean, is it shore or are you out on a boat? From, these are from boat. These are from a boat. Okay. From shore, the, the coolest thing is, is is getting Spanish and blues in the surf. Oh, I mean, wow. they're literally knee high in knee high water, just eating everything, all the anchovies, all the bait fish, you know. And you toss that clouser out there, and they take it, and zing, and you know, you know that, that's that, that's fun from the sh- from the shore. I, I still want to hook a redfish on a fly someday. That's a bucket list uh, item of mine. My first. My first ever and my only one that I caught was down in the southern outer banks. Brad, my son Bradley and I were fly fishing down there. We we had gone down to do an Albi trip, and we had a free day before, and we went down and walked around and fish. We caught pompano, and then we came up into the sound area, and uh, I caught a puppy drum and I, I thought it was pretty cool. And the best part about it was caught on a fly that I tied. That That's makes awesome. life so much better. You know, you know, it, 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 it does. It does. When you, when you tie your own or you paint your own lures, you know, uh, and you know, a couple of years back I got started in, I was a big trout guy, you know, and I think it was 2000, 18 or 2019 we had all those rains in the spring and the rivers were washed out you know mm-hmm. and i was like i was so frustrated that's when i got into kayak fishing because i said i had to find something else and somebody said oh why don't you go up to lake Laura or go out to uh, lake frederick and fish out there so i did and i was in the old town Durango, you know that's all i had and i had a milk crate with two pvc things for two rods and my fly rod on the front you know I wasn't geared up like I am now. (laughs) And uh, it was such a blast. And after that, I started learning. And I started talking with the guys at Mossy Creek Fly Fly Shop in Harrisonburg. And, you know, they kept telling me about these different flies to use, you know. And I said, okay. So I I tried them. And then I got hooked up with Chuck Craft flies. I don't know if you've ever heard of Chuck Craft Mm -hmm. flies. Uh, Boga Bugs. Uh, right now they're through Eastern Trophies fly fishing, uh, and it's a cork bug, and it's just a bug, and it's got rubber legs and just to kind of show you here. Oh, it shows here. And then guys, don't worry, we'll we'll get to all your questions here in the chat. Yeah. So don't sorry. Worry. No, and then, fine. you know, here we got you know. Ooh, that now this nice. one I tied myself. It's a mirror pattern of one of theirs. Oh, wow. You know, and made out of wine bottle cork. I actually. Huh. Don't buy my cork. I get wine bottle corks from our local brewery. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to, to, to save on costs, because I was just starting out, you know. And so I tie those. And I ended up developing, and this is my first ever, my own mouse pattern. And if anybody's seen me down at Lake Anna or anywhere else and with the fly rod, I'm throwing this for largemouth bass. I think it was really, really all right. Perfect. Wow. Okay. Is that that's top water, correct? Leather tail. Yeah, this is all top water. This is top water. That and it neat. floats right on the top. And then I just, you know, I'll let it and make it smack on the water. Make that big splash, just like a, a Zara Spook would or a Whopper Plopper would. That first splash, let it sit for a minute and then just twitch it. And just twitch it. And they'll come up and eat it. And it's great. And then I have since modified the body style. Oh, neat. And huh. that this one's been abused. How much of those that way? What's that? How much of those way? Cause they look pretty big. Yeah. You're not going to throw these with the, with a five or a four way to trout rod. You're going to need okay. a seven or an eight way. Okay. Gotcha. 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 You, you probably could get away with a six, but they're, we got some weight. I don't know. Eighth of an ounce or so. You know, think about a about a about a quarter of a wine bottle cork is what's used to make this. Okay. And then you got uh, a number two or a number four hook. Hmm. That is really cool. Tail. And yeah, I make these <laughs> in vast amounts. <laughs> and 
I give some away. I make them, but yeah, that's. That, that has to help you though. Having that experience in fly fishing and tying, that's got to help you when you transition to kayak tournament fishing. Yeah, it did. It, <laughs> it, it, it did a lot. It, it helped me in a reading the water and understanding what's going on, especially with top water. Uh, subsurface. I like to throw streamers, uh, clousers mainly. Uh, and, you know, working with, working off of points, but the problem with going subsurface where those bass are, it's always some sort of structure, some trees or something like that. You, you get hung up a lot there. Mm -hmm. And so I stick to the top water with the fly rod. If, if there's no top water bite with the fly rod, then I'm, I go to the, what the affectionados of the fly fishing world they call the devil stick and man i'll tell you it, it's great now the uh it's pretty cool you know uh that it, it did help me a lot so, so g g getting back to the tournament yeah you you found kind of these key areas you felt like what you had, I mean, if you spitballed go before the tournament even started, you thought you, you found like what 80 inches plus, which I guess for people at home, that would be probably an average of what 13 to 15 inches per fish, something around there. Well, I didn't, I didn't even get, I don't think I even guessed. I don't, I don't remember if I even guessed, but one of my best friends, Lee Richmond, who I fish with, he was in the tournament and we fished together a lot is he guessed 86 inches. <laughs> on the and he dot. nailed it. I mean, he nailed it. Uh, we talked about, you know, where he was fishing, where I was fishing. He fished the same stretch. I fished a little different stretch this year. Uh, and, you know, he, he guessed 86 inches. And I had no idea when I was going in. So we put in, Michelle drops me off first thing in the morning, you know, about 20 after six or whatever. She helps me get in. She takes my truck, takes it home. And I go, I just start going around the first curve. And the first curve was just all ripples. I just basically walked it through that. Mm -hmm. And I came down and next, I came down to the next section. And that's when I first got the first fish of the day. And that was a fall fish. Wow. <laughs> On a whopper yeah. plopper or what? What are we yeah. doing here? 13 inch, 13 Holy inch crap. On a whopper plopper. He ate that thing. I was like, oh, I got a good one. Got, got a good one, right? I thought I did, right? Nope. It's a fall fish. I was like, oh, okay. Well, that kind of. So I was in a section where it was a little, it was fairly deep water, you know, uh, six foot or something like that. Had Had some good sections that were holes in it. And I said, there's got to be more fish in here, you know? So I paddled off to the side, put the kayak on the, on the thing, put my string, my, my cord. And when I'm in the smaller water, I take the cord and I'll put it around my wrist. So the mm -hmm. kayak doesn't go anywhere. Not that it was going anywhere because it was kind of beached. And I just waited out to about my knees and just started fan casting. Smart. You know, the whopper plopper. Bam. You know, I was like, oh, wow, okay. And I was like, and it was pulling. And I said, oh, this ought to be a good one, you know? And I start reeling it in. And I can't remember if that was the 17 or the 16 and a half that I pulled in first. And I was like, okay, I'm on the board. I was, I was excited. I was, I was really, really excited because I mean, all the other tournaments for me have been tough, took me a while. And even with this tournament, even though I was fishing in the vet, here in the valley, I actually had some service too. Mm. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is great. So of course I'm fumbling around, getting them back to the kayak, getting the board out, you know, putting the client, the fish grips on him so he doesn't run away. And he's just meaner and <laughs> all get out, you know, a small mouse get. Get him on the board, take my picture, start to upload. And you get that little thing that goes, wee, wee, wee. Oh, my God. I tell you. <laughs> you know, and I'm watching it. It says 20%, 30%, 40%. Oh, it drove me nuts. You know, because I was pumped, man. I was really excited. It, it's so hard because, like, when I fished the first one at Lake Anna, it's what I, that's what I did is I immediately tried to upload it. And then this tournament, I was like, listen, no. 
I'm just going to take a bunch of pictures and then I, I, I'll find a section, a time frame just to wait and try to upload them. Cause it, it stresses you out when you catch a nice one and you're just jacked up and then you're sitting there watching that thing load. It's like, Oh my God, I got to get back out there. Yeah. It was like seven o'clock when I got the first one. And then, so you like, got the okay. first one in the boat, then what? First one in the boat, you know, put them in there. I was like, okay, I didn't even look at the thing. I just uploaded it, you know, Smart. and it said it was accepted. And I said, okay, good. I went back. I went right back out to that same spot through again. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Get in the kayak, go down. I didn't go a hundred feet, maybe, maybe 200 feet. So are and you on the same stretch? I'm you sorry. Think you're on the, do you think you're on the same stretch, like from the same riffle pool? Yeah. Basically? Uh, it was the same set of flat water same flat okay okay same set of flat water uh but this one was come off a rock the other one was kind of more in a wide open it had some it had some ledges in it this one was a little bit closer to shore there was a cliff that came down and there was a big rock there that i could see under the water gotcha plopped it right there two strokes bam i had another fish on i was like oh wow okay this is being a good day you know i was i was excited yeah and I, you know, I'm just shaking and carry it on. So I bring, bring it in and do the whole thing. But this time I'm in the kayak, you know, I'm floating down the river, you know, and I got this fish on. So as soon as I get the fish into the net, I put the net because I have one of the yak attacks, you know, the folding oh, okay. nets. Okay. And I put the arm underneath my leg and the fish is hanging in the water. I'm paddling off to the shore because I don't want to lose the section of river that I'm in. That, you know? yeah. So I paddled to the shore. Now, keep in mind, we did have wind and the wind was blowing us down, it was blowing me down, you know, as fast as it could. You know, it was it was pretty windy, but I got over to shore, you know, did the whole thing. Catch, photo, you know, release, all that fun stuff. Upload, wee, 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 wee. you know, I got two fish, man. I'm all take off again. Go down a little further, um, get stuck up on the rocks, you know, <laughs> scrape over some low waters, get stuck up on the rocks again, pushing off my paddle, pushing off my leg. I get one leg hanging out the kayak. Of course, I have my life jacket on here, and I, I know the river pretty well. And uh, so I'm just kind of hanging out, you know, pushing off, get down a little further. I don't know. I guess it was... I guess it was probably about 9 30. So you have two in the boat and then you're basically going like what some hour and some change before your next yeah. day. That's when the head games start playing. <laughs> you know, and then I don't, I, I guess it was about 9 30. I have a picture of it because I took a screenshot of it about 9 30 ish or so. I get my fish. Was it 9 30? I think it was about 9 30. I get my third fish mm -hmm. and I don't remember all the sizes when I got what. You know, because I know there was like two 16 and a halves, a, a 17, 17 and three quarters, 17 and a half, and then the big one. And so I get the third fish, put it on the board, and I'm sitting there in third place. And I took a screenshot of it because I was sick. I was awesome. pumped, man. I had three fish. That's more fish than I had in any of the tournaments, you know? <laughs> and uh, I was like, this is, this has got to, this is so cool. It's such a great day, you know? And I said, well, I can at least get a couple more, even two, two more 12s. I said, I got a good chance of being in the money, you know, because mm -hmm. we had, I don't know, 50 couple. So it was, it was. <sighs> That's awesome. That's really a lot awesome. Of dinks. It was a lot of dinks after that, you know, a lot of dinks. I got frustrated with the dinks on the whopper plopper, started throwing the jerk bait, caught a couple more dinks on that. Then coming down, these two kayakers pat. Well, during that time, my paddle cracks. Okay, and what happened? Okay, well, the paddle I was using was a uh, I can't remember the brand, but it was an old one. It's like fifteen years old. Mm -hmm. Same as same as the kayak. You know, it was one of those aluminum paddles, and right where you click in, where it locks in place there there was a stress crack all the way around, except for maybe about a half an inch. Mm. 
And I was, I saw it and I'm like freaking out. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I don't need this thing breaking. And I still had like three quarters of my float to do, you know, and I knew I had a bunch, I had some rock ledges. I had a couple small waterfalls I needed to go over. You know, I was just like, ah, I don't know. So I called Michelle up and said, hey, go to the house. In my big, in my good kayak is my good paddle. Go get it. And, uh, you know, that's my carbon fiber. And I said, go get it and meet me at this other, at this spot. So she said, I'm eating lunch right now, you know? And I'm like, okay, take an hour, hour and a half, whatever. I can fish that time. Go ahead. So she goes, and does that. Well, I'm coming down. And then these two kayakers come down and, uh, these you can get kayak. your phone. That's no big deal. Yeah, no. <laughs> this, this is not, this is not one of them polished. I can't things. remember the name, his name right off the top of my head. Oh, you're Hold fine. On a minute. And then to everybody in the chat, don't worry. We're going to get all to your questions here shortly. We're going to finish out this, this section of the interview, and then we're going to get to all oh. your questions. Uh, but again, please like and subscribe to the channel. I want to really pump this in the algorithm. We have four likes right now on the page, but there's about 20 of you watching at one point. So come on, everyone hit that like button. It really helps me out. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, so uh, these two kayak, well, a couple other kayakers had passed me, you know, regular people, you know, just floating down the river. And I let them get on through. And then these two kayakers come up and they're in this, the one guy's in, uh, it looked like a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, can't think of the name of his kayak, but it was uh, James Coleman. And uh -huh. I didn't know who he was, okay? He he asked me, are you fishing a tournament? Because I guess he saw my three rods and, you know, my net and all that. And I said, yeah. And uh, I'm still kind of fishing with it. And I catch a fish. And I'm reeling it in, you know. And he he's there. He's watching me do it. And, you know, he was excited for me. And I, I pull it in. And he, he doesn't really, I don't think we introduced each other by name yet, you know. So we don't know each other. We just, you know, we know we're fishing a tournament. And uh, we, uh, I, I, but it takes it under the boat one way, then back under the boat that way and this way and that way a couple of times. I said, oh, please hang on, please hang on, please hang on. Finally get it in the net, get it in the net. And I asked him, I said, would you mind taking a picture for me? And, uh, we would, uh, you know, I'll get it from you later, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> you know, and that's when I just told him my name, you know, and uh, so he, he was very nice and took a picture for me. So I got a picture of me holding that one fish and, you know, and my full kayak, you know, so that, that was really cool. That was, I was excited because that was, that was my fourth fish, you know, we got one and, left. Yeah. One more left. And I, I think that was like a 17 that one and uh i was like you know and i was like okay and so he and i asked him kind of where he took out he said a little further down i said okay kind of where he was doing so he started above me and wow he caught up and then they went on further because it was getting closer i think now it was like 11 30 or something like that maybe and so him and his buddy, I, I'm not sure who it was, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. Uh, they they went on down past me, and I fished some more. And then it wasn't long after that. I'm still with this cracked paddle, you know, and I'm like, mm. I, I told her it'd be an hour or so before I met her, and I'm like, uh, oh, start getting threw out again. Bam, number five. Number five turned out to be my 18-incher. And I was pretty Dang. excited. I was like, yes, dude, you know, I got five fish, you know? And I'm like, Oh my God, I got, it was so good. It was so good. And, uh, how did you catch them? Like, it's so crazy. Cause I feel like people mostly got their, their good bites early in the day. It sounds like you got years later. Yeah. I mean, I got, you know, I got the timestamps on all when they, when they came in and you know, it was, it was, it was, it was about one in a, maybe one an hour. Wow. You know, uh, of a good fish. It was a, it was a good stretch of water. That's all I gotta say. I'm sorry, I'm not telling anybody where it is. Sorry, but you know, 
it's on the North Fork. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's the thing, too. We've talked about this on live streams before. When you're dealing with the river, it is more about sections. And within those sections, you can figure it out. I, I mean, it, it really is. If you want to pre-fish one of these things, you got to just get put your time in and float it. And that's the nice thing about river fishing in that sense where there's nothing. You don't have to have a crazy magic bait in general. You just got to put time in and float. Once you find a section that has them in this time of year, they're going to be there. And you, you just got to figure them out. Well, you know, this is this is common knowledge, and I've posted on my Facebook page, all my friends and stuff. Is I fish down at uh, Seven Bends uh, State Park, the mm -hmm. new state park down here, and I fished that. I wade fished that a lot, and that's where I did a lot of studying and a lot of, you know, and I've caught fifteen to seventeen inches there, just right there, you know, wading, you know, uh, so they're, you know, they're in there, they're in there. You just got to figure out where they're at find them and work but like i said it was, it was it was a lot of fun so i got my fifth fish time is moving along you know i'm trying to get closer and i see where i told her i'd meet her and as i'm paddling up to meet her to get the paddle this is i don't know 130 quarter to two and just as I move up to the thing, my paddle breaks. Mm. I got two, two pieces. Luckily, I'm pushing in the shore. And I just called it quits and said, it's going to be however it is. And after I got my fifth fish, I will be honest, I did take a picture of the standings. And I won't say where I was because it ate on me all day long. So I get out and then... I guess Mike posts about he's to land the awards, you know, here we're all wait. I'm wait. I'm excited. Seven o'clock. Okay. Because he took down the board at like two o'clock, you know, so nobody could see. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my God, is am I going to hold up? Am I going to hold up? Well, you know, of course Mike had that incident and, you know, I'm glad everybody is safe there because you know, the rivers, the rivers can be, because I've fished a rat before. So I know what he went through. I know what a lot of guys went through. I'm actually fly fishing the rap here on the second. I'm going to fly fish for small mouse on the rap on the second of July. I, I was going to say, like, I had a couple of questions for you, but then again, a, a, the quick break is guys, again, please like, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out the algorithm. We have eight likes right now. We need two more for 10. Come on. There's over, we're getting close to 20 people watching on Facebook and YouTube. Can we get out of the 20? Can we get two more, please? Come on guys. Um, like yeah. Please. Cause this guy has a really, really good information to just to drop on us here. Did you know you were going to fish the Shenandoah? Because you can fish the Upper Potomac, the Shenandoah, or the Rap. And it seems like when I look back at the history of this tournament, a ton of dudes always did well in the Rappahannock. It looks like statistically a lot of guys. Oh, the rap, the rap. There's no doubt. I thought, the, I thought the winner would come from the Rap. I really did. I thought the winner would come from the Rap. I really believe there's bigger fish in the Rap. Uh, but, you know, it was kind of me and, you know, I live on the North Fork. I'm stubborn. <laughs> you know, and yeah, amen. I wanted to win it on the North Fork. I wanted to show that the North Fork, you know, because people just think about the North Fork and say, oh, it's just low water. It's a little stream. It's not very technical. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a little challenging to get to public put ins and takeouts because there's a lot of private property, you know, but if you do your research, you will find those places, you know, bridge abutments, uh, you know, there, there's lots of places. There, you know, there's a couple of the North friends of the North Fork has a couple, you know, there's, uh, there's another one, a public landing, uh, up by Chapman's landing one, uh, you know, so there are places to put in and take out. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to do the North Fork and Lee, Lee Richmond, the same way, you know, he, he's the same way, you know, he, he fished and he fished the North Fork too. And he was like me, you know, Hey, we want to do that. And. Lee, I hope you're watching. I told you I'd shout out to you. Yeah, we got a couple. So Scott says, Amen. I'm an Upper Potomac homer. An individual actually came, I think, in third fishing the Upper Potomac, which was insane because our conditions were shite down where we were at. It started to get bad. <laughs> I've never fished the Upper Potomac, and I'd love to do it, but I don't know it, so I'd have to get somebody to say, hey, let's go sometime. Yeah, it, it's... I'm willing to go, you know? 
Yeah, that's the thing is it really is you got to know the place based on the conditions that you were faced with. That's elite stuff, Lee. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you, you did it. Um, like, and that was the thing, like the North Fork, like I didn't know if the Shenandoah could do it. I just didn't know if it was going to set up for it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you proved everybody wrong because you got the right bites. And this is something like my, the guy that taught me, you don't need to catch a bunch. You just need to catch the right five. And it's so hard when you're given three rivers to be like, dude, you still just need to catch five stupid fish of the right size. You don't the fish have to gods catch were looking down on me. The fish gods were looking down on me that day. You know, it was, it was, they were looking down on me. That's all I can say. You know, to have, it was your moment to have those quality fish. And, you know, I mean, I was giddy. I was so, that's the only term I can use. So giddy all the way up until awards. And on Sunday, I went out, we went out fishing. We went over, we were going to go to Lake Frederick. Then we changed our mind and went up to Lake Laura. And uh, I took Michelle fishing in the John boat and we got blown away. You know, I mean, the, the mm -hmm. wind was just blowing us. So we called it quits. But we're out in the middle of the lake when Mike does the awards, you know, and our service is like hardly anything when you're up there at Bryce, you know, and it was spotty and we couldn't tell. I was just so giddy. And I let out a big whoop when he announced it. I was like, yes, yes, you know, I was just, I was just, and I, I went, at, we got done, we packed it up. Packed it in, went over to Woodstock Brew House, had, had a beer, had a couple of beers, celebrated with the crew there, a bunch of our friends, and you know it was. I've been on cloud nine since then. You know? How big's a trophy? Uh, How big's trophy going to give you? I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, Dude, that we... no trophy that I know of. I just know it's a it's a good chunk of change. Which yeah, and this is this is something that I probably do. I. And I didn't do it this time. Usually, I, I have a, a fisheye camera that I run. Oh, cool. Have you heard of those fisheyes? Yeah, it, it's pretty good, but I'm, it, it's just consistently filming. And I didn't take it with me. So all I had was my cell phone to take my pictures. Uh, but uh, I wished I had that on video. The... Uh, so I'm probably with with my winnings. I'm probably going to get a GoPro. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, that that's that's probably what I'm going to do is go get a, is get a GoPro. Now I got to decide whether I want to have it as a stern mount looking back in front of me or looking facing me for the next time. The biggest thing is make sure just keep power going to it because I know I had two running and sometimes man you you get in the heat of the moment and you forget they they, they shut off. I have uh, the Yolo Tech battery pack. Good. And that I use on my fish eye, so I'm going to use that for oh, the GoPro. That'll work great then. Yeah. And then so. So now we do have a couple of questions that came in here. Yes. So we got. Uh, let's see which ones we'll go with here. Uh, we got Scott again. Glad my forty dollars went to this guy. <laughs> Amen, Scott. And then let's see. Let's get. We got a couple more here. Let's see. Here's a good one. Big body bass and where are the good river spots in the Shenandoah and Clark Loudoun County? Uh, big body bass and do you mean uh, from the bank or to paddle? Because if you're fishing from the bank, it's pretty much, I would say like Route 7, uh, right there at Route 7. Also, before you go to Route 7, if you're going from Loudoun County out, you take a right. Shenandoah owns an old golf course. They turn into like a walking area and there's some bank access there. So uh, if you're still in the chat, hopefully that helps. But that's the bank access. If you want some river spots, like from the kayak, be more specific. I mean, you can float from seven down. I did that once with my wife, and it takes like two days <laughs> to go from seven all the way down. It's a long float. You can also go above seven and, and drop into Watermelon Park. That's a pretty good float for the Shenandoah. Um, let's see here. I've got another one. Joshua. I'm going to butcher your name because I'm terrible with this. Joshua Hallman. Uh, I'm one of the lucky friends, LOL. <laughs> yep, yep. So yep. okay, you know well, that. Oh yeah, well he he gave me he gave me some he gave me some good pork barbecue the other day. So uh, I think I owe him a, a river trip. That's probably what did it then. <laughs> Christopher Sherwood, love fishing the Shenandoah, but the Outer Banks is like dying and going to fishing. Yes, house. Chris. Yes. 
Outer Banks is fishing Mecca. If you had to pick between fishing only saltwater the rest of your life, though, or fishing rivers and streams around here, what would you have to pick? Rivers and streams. Rivers and streams, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The thing about the thing about fishing in saltwater is uh, everything pretty much travels in schools. Mm. You know, so there's either no fish or fish, no fish or fish. You know, uh, going to you know the rivers and streams they're everywhere you know you just Mm got to find out yeah ashley exactly 100 percent. they stack up i see it pop up on the screen there exactly yeah nibble and then catch 10 fish in 20 minutes huge shout out actually no it it, and that's the thing about rivers i think it's so crazy like because like something i was going to ask you like why is it some people get so frustrated i remember mike talking about that in the meeting before we got started that some people get frustrated with these tournaments what do you think the frustration is with people that fish for smallmouth and rivers um growing up with it growing in loudon county where i just did this growing up i feel like i'm colorblind to it what do you think gives anglers such a hard challenge when they go from lake anna to to the upper potomac or the shenandoah um you're you're dealing with different currents the current the water flow Mm -hmm. that's that's what i think you know it's how the water flows you know how it you got rocks you got boulders you got ledges you know especially in the north port i mean the ledges are like this you know they're diagonal they're not straight up or you got a big overhanging ledge like that they're all diagonal and you probably went through some of them Uh, on your trip is, you know, you get stuck on one five feet, two, three feet later, you're stuck on another one and you're stuck on another one in a low water situation. Mm -hmm. But in those cuts, they, they'll run, they'll hide, you know? Uh, So those, sometimes those cuts are not places to, to ignore is what I'm saying. And I also think it's, it's, I, I think people get, I don't even know how to word this correctly. Big small mouth, they, especially in this gin clear water, like the part I was fishing was chocolate milk, but generally speaking, if you're drifting, and this is my thought, you're fishing it almost wrong because you're going downstream and you're it, generally, if you don't know what you're doing, you're casting downstream and bringing it back. You're drifting your boat probably over the best stuff and you're spooking them. And so when you see an area, I, I kind of oh, approach it like you're a ton of fish. Yeah. Like you got to think about I, if you see the juice, you got to think like you're either bone fishing on the flats or for trout. You got to get off, walk around and think about there's one sitting right there and you don't want to spook it. And I think people don't understand that if they just float a river, like how fish position. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, remember, they're they're looking up, you know, they're looking up most of the time up river, you know, looking up river. They see something splash and they'll chase it. Oh, I meant to tell you it was the most exciting part about the 18 incher. Sorry. Yeah, no, go for it. Go for it. Reminded me was when I caught the 18 incher, I threw the whopper plopper, right? And as soon as it landed, I twitched it. He hit it. I missed him. I start popping it back in. He hits it again. I missed him again. He hits it a third time. I finally get him. And he chased it. He chased it probably 10, 15 yards or she chased it, whatever, but you know, it, it chased it. And I mean, I had three chances on that boy Mm. and it was, it was pretty cool to watch. I really wish that one would have been on video somewhere because that was just so kaploosh, you know, kaploosh, kaploosh. And he chased it and he chased it through the ripples. Now, one thing that I noticed, uh, something I don't, I didn't mention about looking down the rivers and this goes for the rap, probably the upper Potomac or whatever. If you see rocks and you know how the word goes around the rocks and then it makes that clear stagnant water, toss your whopper plopper or your jerk bait or even your wacky rig or what or your Ned rig or whatever you're using, toss it in the light colored area of that. Oh. Okay. That toss it in the light colored area. There that's where the fish are gonna hide. You know, they're gonna be sitting there. Why is that? Because that's where the slack water is. They're not. You expending all that energy in a fast water. They'll jump out into the fast water to grab something moving by and then come back in. You know, uh, you know, that's what I found. And and the same thing if you're fly fishing, those are the targets that I, I target with the fly rod. The other thing, uh on clear days, 
especially when it gets it later on into the day, into the afternoons, look for the shadows of the trees. I think you brought that up not long ago in one of your uh, yeah, I, I mean, shows. you brought that up, look, yeah. you know, right there when it gets up to the top of the day, that sun's beating down, look for those, that shade line, you know, work that shade line. Uh, last year, um, the, all the fish hang out there. Last year, I went fly fishing for carp and we, you know, through the brood X hatch and I caught nine carp that day and one of them was a citation and it, that's where they were. They were over into that shaded area, up close up against the bank in that shaded area. And the same thing with the small mouse. We were catching small mouse on these flies. These cork flies are, are, are money. I'm telling you, there's money. If you're into fly fishing, a cork fly is money. And the big thing is don't worry about a fancy presentation. You're not fishing for trout here. Mm -hmm. You're fishing for bass. And bass like to see that plop, that splat. They call it a splat. And don't worry about, I'll probably catch heck from this from other people, but other fly guys, but don't worry about a big old tippet. Make sure you're using two, nothing less than 2X. Nothing less than 2X tippet, okay? Uh, I usually just use about an eight, four to eight foot section of mm -hmm. eight pound test oh, wow. as, as my leader onto my fly line. You don't have to have a big fancy roll. You know, it's just got a, when I'm doing the top order stuff like this, it's just got a plot mm -hmm. and then stick it in. I, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. And I love fly fishing and I'll go back to it. I just had to win this one. And I knew by the past experience of last year that, I couldn't chance losing any fish. I had to land every fish I got. And, and I did, I did lose a couple. I did and, lose a couple. But that's the nature of smallmouth. Like you're, you're not, it's hard to be perfect when you're dealing with smallmouth. Um, so oh my God, we got a lot of questions here. Let's try to bang through some yeah. of these. Uh, let's see. Uh, Randall Grove. Randall, yes. Thank you. North you are Florida. the man, buddy. You are the man. Thank you. I, I owe him a lot for this trip. We sat the night night before two nights before sat there on google earth going over what fish what sections to hit where to hit it where what to stay what to avoid you know watch that yeah you're the man bud thank you thank this you Randall. You. i got you you know what we talked about <laughs> uh let's see let's see we got so many uh ashley again the fish like to sit in the eddies and the rocks yes they do um but they also i think the bigger ones also want access to deep water i think it's more Bassmaster magazine saying they always are up super shallow they want to also have access to the deep in general i think so don't always just fish the big eddies look for those specific juice spots where like there's deep water somewhere nearby um, especially if you get a, a riffle to a sharp break, that's, that's juice watch, wherever. Watch that run, you, want, you know, where, where that water breaks right in there. If you can mm. get your lure, your fly, whatever in that, in that run right there, you'll probably get a hit. You'll probably get a hit, whether it's a little one or a big one. Meredith, this guy loves to fish. So <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> He also is a, a his bank account's a little bit bigger now too. Uh, let's see. Uh, which lake are you going to fish next derby? Uh, I'm not telling. Uh, so there you Maybe go. Maybe when I fished last year, probably. So yeah, and then <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually I have no idea. I'm gonna pre-fish the week before. I have to go to ICAST in Orlando, so I'm gonna fly straight in to fish the tournament i'm gonna leave my kayak with somebody down there probably and just basically wing it probably <laughs> so it, it's gonna be no sleep but it's gonna be fun uh let's see ashley again since you fly fish have you heard of the south huddleston south holston i guess holston river in northeast tennessee it's a fly fishing mecca yep so. i've heard of it uh never gotten to fish it uh that would be cool uh, I've fished the uh, Great Smoky Mountains uh, up through Gatlinburg, over to Cherokee, fished all that, but never gotten to do the Holston. What is a place that you really want to trout fish, though? Like if you had a bucket list item for places that you'd want to trout fish? 
somewhere out in Colorado. Just oh, really? For, for cut, cut throats, just to say I did it. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. That sounds really, really you cool. You know, that's, that's, you know, or, you know, second one was, and I don't think I'll ever do it, is go to Argentina. But, you know, I, in the U.S., I, I, I want to go fish cut throats. What, what type of trap do they have in Argentina? Is it uh, rainbows, big ones, big ones. Wow. <laughs> that sounds really, really cool. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that'll happen, but you know, it, you uh, can always dream, right? You can always dream like win the lottery. <laughs> well, Hey, if you keep catching five fish, every time you catch five right now, statistically, every time you catch a limit, you win. I'm just happy. I got on the board. Really? That's, that was my pure excitement that I got on the board because the the most last year at Lake Anna I got I got one fish the night before a fourteen incher and then the next day I just got a bunch of dinks didn't catch nothing. This year I went to Lake Anna and I ended up two fish and I actually I think I was a spot ahead of you. Thomas, I think you were at, at that one spot. You know I think I had maybe an inch bigger fish and. I was like, well, at least I didn't get skunked and I got fish on the board. That was a tough tournament too. Uh that that was that was tough. I had I but I actually for that tournament, see I ran a top order 120, P, a non PDL, just paddle version. Okay. And for the and on the first on the first trail stop, the Potomac, another windy one, not too windy, but it was windy. Man, I got tired of paddling and with the winds and everything. And I said, you know what? I put a trolling motor on it. And I, you know, I did the whole thing, mounted it up. You can see pictures on my Facebook page and stuff. Is uh, you know, I put pedal steering on it and I took it out to Anna, and that was a big thing. That got me out outside. I fished Christopher Run and I got outside of outside of the that that tributary there as Christopher Run went around to the bridge. I got two fish there within five minutes of each other. And I was excited because I got on the board. You know, that was that was pretty cool. Uh and then of course, you know, I, I had a good day. I was I was pumped on that one. And then I knew this one was coming up. I went to the uh we went to the get together over at Tim's and met a few of the guys that I hadn't met before. And uh you know it was like you know, I, I think I even told Mike about the story of, of, of the Shenandoah last year, you know, winning and losing. And I set my focus on this tournament. This was going to be my tournament. And, mm -hmm. you know, luckily from, you know, God willing, I, I was able to pull it off. And you did it. And, and you did it. And and again, you're right about the kayak, too, about, yeah. I, again, me pedaling in the last one and this one, based on how I did this one, I was pedaling all day. My God, you need a trolling motor. Cause I mean, I got some ripped calves after two events, just pedaling all freaking day. I, I, I feel like you just need one just to be more efficient on the water. Yeah. The, uh, there was one. <clears throat> so remember I talked about the gentleman who, uh, took, took my picture. Yeah. You know, he came in second place. You know that. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a cool tip to the story. And he James texted, Coleman. He texted, yep. He texted me after that because after he sent me the pictures, and he said, "I knew I was on. We were on the right side of the the right river, you know." And I mean, that I thought that was really cool. It was really kind of a neat thing. I thought that was really a neat thing. Was that? we were both the top two were on the same river, same section. And we were able to pull out those kinds of fish. I, I yeah. Like the fact that Shenandoah, did, okay. Think about this. You got you in first place, Shenandoah. We got James in second place, Shenandoah. Then we got, I apologize. I'm going to butcher your name. My deepest apology. Chun was in third place, upper Potomac. If you he told me, big fish, though. Yeah. I, you, if you put a gun to my head, I thought it would be Rappahannock would be somewhere in the top three, not the Shenandoah and Upper Potomac. So that's just so cool to see that there's health there. I mean, hell, even if, if I actually landed everything, I would have been in the top 10. So we'd have a lot more people than the Shenandoah. And I'm, I have a point to this. 
do you think the Shenandoah is now, is it on, is it back? Can we officially say that? Um, I know back when I was a kid, there were so much lesions and fish kilts and it was so bad for a while. Where, where do you think the river is now? I think it's in good shape. I don't think it's fully back to where, you know, days of lore was. Uh, but I think it's in good shape. I mean, the, the South Fork fishes always fishes really well. You, you get good fish. You get good numbers there. Same thing with the main step. You know, I mean, last year I fished it. I fished the main step. And I think it was 50 to 7, that area, you know. And I caught some decent fish there. You know, I was fly fishing. You know, I, I probably don't get the numbers that a spin guy would. But I, you know, I think I caught 20 or 30 fish. And I was carp fishing that day. <laughs> Yeah. Randall Grove, good shape, but not what it was. I, I think it's coming back. I really do. I think we're a couple of spawn classes away um, from it being back to to. I think in a good in a good place. I really we don't have no major floods. Yeah, we we need to have this rain quit in the springtime. Let's see, Steve Rappahannock and Madsen Countries offer some of the best overall trout streams in the common i you know we're gonna have some more people on uh, specifically about trout streams if you guys didn't realize from the john odenkirk thing we talked about snakeheads this is not just bass fishing i want everything in the area so i want to get some good people on the show to talk about the opportunities for fly fishing uh, i love fly fishing the park should know national park is great really it's great it, it, it there's there's a lot of good streams there a lot of good streams and you know you got to do a little hiking you know, to get to some of the better fishing. But I mean, you can have 50 fish days. I mean, you're not talking big fish, you know, you're talking yeah. four inch to other, but the beauty, I mean, well, here, I don't know. Let me see if I Oh, go for it. Go for it. I'm a, I'll answer some more questions while you grab some stuff. Can you see that? Oh, I can. That's a brookie from the. Wow. That's park. beautiful. And that. Uh, of course, that's my citation. Uh, yellow perch from McClure, but <laughs> cool. But uh, there, I just didn't want to. But yeah, that's. Let's see. What did you use? Which person? All right. Well, I guess we could both go. Uh, so, what did we use to catch? Uh, I used. I had three baits keyed in where I was. I went. I had to go chartreuse and black uh, crankbait. I had a striking square bill for the shallower poles. And I used a Strike King uh, chartreuse with a black back that I did a little bit deeper bill for the deeper holes. And then my backup baits was a micro swim bait with a spin head and then a power Ned rig. I like to go June bug because I think it looks more like the Mad Tom catfish. Uh, and I also had a, a wacky worm on, but the problem is it was just too chalk. It was bad. <laughs> it was it was bad where we were at. Um, I haven't, I have not fished the river that rough in a while where it was white caps. It, it was gnarly down where we were at. I don't know if it, it blew that bad where you guys were at, but at least for the guys I was talking to, it was insane. No, it, it blew us around, but it didn't, it didn't blow, give us white caps and, you know, didn't give us any rough water. It was, it was pretty smooth. There was a lot of areas that were smooth, but then again, in, in our, my, our section, it, it, I had mountains on this side, hills on this side, mm -hmm. you know? So excuse me, we were down into the, into the guts and trees on both sides or cliffs, you know? So it was, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, uh, what I used, uh, I said earlier is, uh, I used the Whopper Plopper 75, uh, monkey butt and I know it. Tell you, I don't, I don't mind monkey butt and I know it. Those are the two patterns I use. I used, I used my own pattern of jerk bait, lost a bunch of small ones on that. Uh, caught a lot of small ones on the jerk bait, and then I used a wacky rig. Uh, what what is your wacky rig setup? Generally speaking, are you going with a? Uh, well, I mean, what worm do you like to use? What type of hook do you like to use? Well, a lot of most of the time I fish a green pumpkin, okay. or I fish a purple pumpkin. It's uh, purple. I just actually ordered a new one. Uh, I get who is I can't remember the guy. I just spoke with him tonight too. Uh, who makes them, but oh wow, it's got a purple flake in it, and it's purple, that's beautiful, with purple with green pumpkin in there. But yeah, and then I just it was uh, 
like a one off hook and just and and I use I use the rubber ring. Okay. okay. And I use the rubber ring because and I and I kind of hook it through a little bit of the of the worm. Otherwise, because the small mouth will pull it out in a heartbeat, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, but that just toss it out there, no weight, just toss it. You know, and like I said, the whopper plopper, if they miss the whopper plopper, I followed it up with with the with the with the pumpkin wacky rig. And that accounted for uh two. I he did the wacky counted for two scoring bass after the whopper plopper miss. And, and the, the wacky worm is so important to have when the river's clear. It really is. Like you you gotta have that in your arsenal. And so that that was that was it. It was just it was just a great day, man. That's all I can say. Um, no. it, was, it, it was it was just so much fun. It was a little scary about the about the broken paddle, and you know, a couple times I got stuck, and that paddle's cracked, and I'm thinking it's gonna crack even more, and then I'm gonna have two paddles, and I'm gonna sit there like you know, like this, and then like this, you know, and I'm in a sit-in too, not a sit on top, but a sit-in, you know. Uh, so, but yeah, it was that that was the scariest part, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think it was really cool. But, sir, I mean, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I, we're all caught up on all the chats, which was fantastic for, for you being able to stay for us to answer all these questions. I mean, the last thing I try to ask all my guests, like, what's another, like, goal you have for this year? Place in another tournament. Okay. Another trail stop. Place. Get get my five fish in place. That's okay. all. That's, that's my goal. You know, I... It's fun. Like I said, I started last year. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun to do. Uh, looking forward to the Battle of the Five Lakes, you know, uh, that's coming up here. Uh, probably going to pre-fish it here once or twice. Uh, see how, how that goes. How far is that for you? Hour and a half, hour and a half. depending on which one you go. Okay. Most, of, most of the trips are an hour and a half. This one's in my backyard. This one was my five-minute one. Everything else is an hour and a half. I, you know, I live over in Shenandoah Valley, Woodstock. There's, you know, nothing really close, uh, you know, but it's okay, you know. No, I, I, I feel got you. A little, I got a little money to pay for gas this year, you know, at almost five You do, now. you do. <laughs> you know, I drive a Dodge pickup truck, a Hemi, and, it, you know, it, it, <laughs> uh, but uh, I got a new one this year, so that, that, that a newer one to me, but uh, I used to have, uh, I ran around in a, big orange Dodge, you know, with 287,000 miles in it last year. And this year I got a newer one, so I can, I can make it to the events. <laughs> well, I just want to say congratulations and, and to but to everyone that fished the Shenandoah this year and to make it represent, because again, guys, I, I literally grew up on the Shenandoah. So it's so cool to see the rivers back. Uh, and, and like, and I mean, back is like, you can catch nice ones now for God's sakes. The top two were Shenandoah upper Potomac. These are places I fished, and you couldn't do this back in 2008, 2009. So it's just so cool to be like, oh, yeah, you can go out there. And you can catch a fish of a lifetime now the Shenandoah. There's there's one thing I do want to say, and this this goes to all the members of the club. Ever since I've been in it, everybody has been so welcoming. You know, mm -hmm. they'll talk. They'll help you out. You know, they'll, you know, friendly. I, I've fished with a couple of them, you know, uh, through – you know, becoming friends and seeing them on the water at different events and stuff. And it, the, I love the club. It's great. It, it's so much fun. And if you get a chance to do it and you want to do it, it, for those that are not, or are just watching out, it's, it's good. It, it's a good club. It's a good club. Uh, and, uh, you know, communication is good. A uh, couple Oh, on the Potomac, just to bring it up. Sorry, I didn't mean to take up too much no, time. No, no, you but take up as much time as you want. After the Potomac trip, uh, apparently I didn't, for whatever reason, my phone or whatever didn't log me out of the water. I'm driving back, I uh, get home, and Mike gives me a call and says, Hey, Lee, I see you didn't get checked out of the water. Are you out? Everything okay? You know, they're checking up on you. That's awesome. You know, out, that meant a lot, you know, that, that really did. And, uh, you know, the guys are there to, uh, pick things up. 
No, they're a great club, and I've really enjoyed just getting a part of this community, coming from just tournament bass boats and stuff. This is an interesting culture to be delved in for the first time. Uh, and so far, I just, I'm really enjoying it. And, you know, again, you know, thank you so much for coming on. If you ever want to come back on the show again, just to talk about the Shenandoah River or just even fly fishing. Like, I, I would love to have you on just to talk fly fishing for yeah, an hour. Be, be, glad, be glad to. But, uh, uh, wait till yeah. after the second, after July 2nd, I'm going on a, going on a guided trip. Uh, Fun. With Eastern Trophies Fly, Eastern Trophies Fly Fishing. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll probably probably do the wrap. I don't know. Maybe do the Shenandoah. Maybe do the Upper Potomac. I don't know. It depends on what he feels is fishing the best. And it, it it's a fly trip. It's an all day fly trip, and it's it's a lot of fun. I've done it twice now. And the well, last year I did it. We did it for carp during the Brood X hop um, hatch, and that was awesome. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of times I just go out on my own fly fishing, you know, uh, a lot of times when I'm fishing, I'm, I'm out by myself. If, if Lee Richmond don't go with me, I'm by myself. So if anybody shouts, shouts at me or whatever, needs a partner or wants to, wants to come up, you know, we can figure out something to do some logistics. We'll fish. I fish, I fish a lot on Saturdays and Sundays. So, <laughs> well, sir, if I'm ever down your way, I'll definitely give you a holler too, since I'm just up 81. But guys, give him a follow. Give him a follow on social media. Give this guy. I'm rooting for him the rest of the season. Hopefully uh, this next tournament plays out for you. And good luck on your guided trip. Great. Thank you. And Thomas, uh, keep up the good work, man. I love the show. Oh, thank love you so show. much. I really Great. appreciate it. And again, yeah, thank you so much. There you have it, guys. Mm -hmm. Lee Wells. He is the winner of the, the, the Bronzeback Challenge. That was awesome. I learned a lot. I want to try to grow this so we can have more and more guests on. The bigger the channel is, the more guests want to come on the show. It just gives us a little bit more clout so I can get bigger names on the show. We had Greg Odenkirk, part of uh, Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. I want to continue to get guests like that on the show to come talk about the things that we want to talk about. How to make our fisheries better, how to fish better, and how to make sure that there are fish around for the next generation to come. Again, like and subscribe. Please let me know if there's things that you want me to do to make this channel better, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.